our lesson this week takes us into the period of the judges of Israel. This was a period that began after the death of Joshua. It also occurred prior to the reign of the kings of Israel. This was a very interesting period of time for Israel as Israel during the period of the judges, they found themselves in a constant cycle of ups and downs where either they were living in peace because they were being obedient in their faith to the Lord or they found themselves in great struggle because of their disobedience. Here in our Sunday School lesson this week, we see where a period of disobedience was coming to an end because Israel, by their obedience, they cried out to the Lord. And we'll see where the Lord raised up a judge named Ehud to deliver Israel from their struggle. lesson this week that Israel was going through a down period as we can see here in the opening verse of our lesson. Here we'll see that Israel was crying out for deliverance from their suffering. So to set the scene for why Israel was crying out, we'll see that in scripture outside of our lesson for this week in the 12th, the 13th and the 14th verse, we'll see where Israel they had did evil in the sight of God. Now, because they did evil in the sight of God, we'll see that the Lord, he raised up Eglon, the king of Moab. And then we're told that the Moabites, along with the Ammonites and the Amalekites, that they together defeated Israel. And Israel, they were made to serve the Moabites, we're told there in scripture, for 18 years. As I said, this was part of the cycle for Israel during the period of the judges, where Israel, they would do evil in the sight of God. And those adversaries that remained in the land after the death of Joshua, the Lord will allow the adversaries to become like a thorn in the flesh for Israel. They would become a thorn in their side. And when Israel would finally cry out to the Lord, when they would cry out, realizing that they needed him, God, he would raise up a judge for Israel that would then deliver them from their struggle. So we see here in the 15th verse, we're told that the Lord raised up a hood to be a judge of Israel. And we're told that Ahud, he was a Benjamite, and we are specifically told that he was left-handed, as this will come up to play a major role later on in our lesson for this week. Now, judges, we should understand that they weren't kings and they weren't prophets, although there was Deborah who was a prophetess and a judge, and there was Samuel who was both a prophet and a judge as well judges the judges of israel they were raised up by god again during a period of time where israel would need someone to lead them from their suffering from their oppression so judges they were we should understand that they were selected by god they were raised up by god these people who served as judges of israel they weren't doing anything by their own strength nor by their own might not by their own power they were working on behalf of the lord which is definitely what Ehud was for Israel. We'll see here that Ehud, he crafted a double-edged dagger that was a cubit, we're told, in length. So that's from about the elbow to the top of the middle finger. So about 21 to 22 inches. Ehud, he had crafted for himself a, a fairly long dagger and we'll see why the dagger was so long. Now, we're told in this same verse that Ahud, after crafting his dagger, he hid it beneath his clothes on his right thigh. And in our next few verses, we'll see that Ahud, he, he had a plan to get Israel out from under their oppressor. He brought a tribute to the king and he presented it to the king. And after presenting it to the king, he sent those that carried the tribute, he sent them away. And then we're told that he turned to let the king know that he had a secret message for him. So this was all a ruse. Again, we have to remember that Ahud, he had a fairly long dagger hidden away out of sight from anybody to be able to see. And so with this ruse, we see where Ahud, what he was trying to do, he was trying to get the king all alone. 
for him and the king to be together by themselves with nobody being able to see what he was about to do. So he had a secret message for the king. This was a way to, to get the king alone. So what was that secret message that he had for the king? The secret message that Ahud delivered was a message that he said came from God. So when the king got out of his chair to hear the message, Ahud, we're told here in scripture, took his hidden dagger that was on the right thigh with his left hand, and he stabbed it deep into the king's belly. Now, as we have been told in scripture prior, the king was a really big man. He was a fat man, we're told in scripture. So when Ahud stabbed him, the man's fat, we're told, it closed over the blade up even into the hilt. And after Ahud had stabbed the king, we'll see that he made an escape. He went out, he shut the door, he locked the door as well. So Ahud did exactly what he planned to do. The king of Moab was now dead and the servants of the king, they were totally unaware what had happened to the king. So we'll see that the king's servants that they actually waited outside his location for quite some time before they even went inside. And when they finally did go inside, they saw him there. They found him dead. Scripture outside of our lesson, outside of our book this week, there in the 26th, the 27th, and the 28th verse, we'll see that while the king's servants were waiting with embarrassment, we'll see that Ahud, he went outside and he blew the trumpet in the mountains of Ephraim. And then we'll see that he called on the children of Israel to follow him as the Lord had delivered their enemies into their hands. This statement from Ahud is one that is of great significance for our lesson today. Now, you may wonder why is that? Well, we have to consider that this generation of Israel, we're told in the second chapter of Judges, this generation did not know the Lord. They didn't know God's work. And so what Ahud does here is he gives God the glory. He's calling on Israel to recognize that the glory doesn't belong to me, it belongs to the Lord. And then we'll see him call out to Israel to follow the Lord, just as Joshua did before the walls of Jericho came down, as we saw in our recent Sunday school lesson last week, where again, we see Ahud here saying, hey, this city, it is yours. It has been delivered to you by God. And so he's saying, not follow me. He's saying, follow the Lord so that we can come out from this suffering, this oppression that we have been up under. So, after hearing the trumpet of Ahud and his words of encouragement, Israel, they came out of the mountain and they went and they took the city. We are told that they killed 10,000, that they subdued Moab, and that they then enjoyed rest for 80 years. So, this success, it came not by Ahud's wit, it didn't come by his own wisdom or knowledge, not by his own strength, not by his own might, not by his own power. And this was something that he understood. So we must learn today that our success, it comes from, again, our obedience. We don't do anything on our own. We don't do anything by our own power, not by our own strength, not by our own might. God, we must understand it is him who makes our blessings possible. It is him who makes it possible for us to take possession of our blessings without God's instructions, without him guiding us, without him leading us, we will never take possession of our blessings. You and I, we will never be content in our souls. So again, our biggest takeaway from this lesson this week is be obedient, yes, but at the same time, you and I, we must learn to give God the glory. Without God, none of this would be possible. Without God, our soul would be in great suffering today. So give God thanks. Again, give God the glory. And again, be obedient. When you are obedient, you will be successful. You will prosper in life.